Hi, beautiful bipeds, zookers, people that like zook, people that enjoy doing zook, people that like to doing body rolls and throwing their heads all around. <laughs> I'm Luis Alton, and today I want to talk with you about how I struggled when I first started zook to learn those crazy head movements, right? And then I want to talk with you about my history with head movements and how I end up creating some new head movements, right? So. Is a crazy path. I hope that in the end of this video you come out knowing a lot more about head movements and with some order to this chaotic and so delightful kind of movement that is moving your spine. So first I started dancing on other social partner dances, Brazilian ones like forró, bolero, samba. And then after I met Lari and she uh, started, me, started to drag me into Zoo, right? So I was already a dancer of this other social partner dance, but when I got into Zook and I saw all those head movements, I, I was like, how am I going to start leading this? I don't understand what is happening. When I see someone then doing, I don't see a pattern. When I see the other person doing, I don't know how those movements are connected. And it's like, she's moving, the, the followers moving all their bodies. So, where, where is the solid part for us to communicate, right? So I was thinking like this. And then I started to take classes and not doing head movements yet, just doing other stuff. That, that was when my first Zook teacher, called Charles Matias, my, my first Zook teacher with regular classes, he gave me a class and he said, hey, Louis, check it out this. I, I got a class with Delano and he uses a way to simplify the head movements in just three head movements. And those head movements are Volta ao Mundo, that today is called as Balão, a lot more, Giro de Cabeça Parada, Tilted Turns, and Roast Chicken, Frango Assado. Now I will show you some examples of those moves, right? Okay, so the first one is Balão. If I do the circumduction of my wrist, it will be this movement, right? If I do the circumduction of my shoulder, it will be this movement. So it's this circular motion. And then if I do the circumduction of my spine, I have the balloon. So it's this mixture of flexion, extension, and side inclinations all together to have the circular motion, just like those examples. Okay, here you can see Shanji leading some balloon using one uh, hand on the arm and the other hand going from one side of Evelyn's traps to the other. And you can see that her head goes as a consequence of her upper body, so it's a passive head movement. Anderson throws Brenda to a balloon and then he uses the space to walk around and then uses the contact on her neck and then receive. Now, using the shoulder blade and also the triceps and leading all the way and with some support on the follower's head so you have tons of possibilities we also have two to turn so basically i froze the position of my spine space and then you just turn so if you tilt your spine like this and turn your head will be going around your vertical axis as a consequence so we call those kind of movements two to turns doesn't have to be necessarily here can be backward to the sides or diagonal, doesn't matter. Just like those examples. So head backward by the hand, again, the same movement. With the head forward by the armpit. And with the head diagonal backward by the elbow. And then when the follower stops the top of her head in the same point and does this rotation in the horizontal axis, we call roast chicken. Just like those rotisserie machines with the dogs looking to the kitchen like <laughs> Yeah, I know it's a terrible name. The top of the head of the follower keeps pointing to the same direction in space. And then he said that, and then he did a sequence, and then I started to understand he was just jumping from one movement to the other. And not only this, but he was using balloon as the hub of connection between roast chickens and then coming back and tilted turns and then coming back to balloon. So it was like balloon, 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 roasted chicken. Come back to balloon, 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 tilted turns, balloon, balloon, finish somehow, you know? And then you have a sequence. You have a freestyle of 
hand movements. Cool. I started to understand how to leech each one of those moves and I started to do my own combos and learn like new positions, new grips. You add to this the possibility of the leader to walk around and you have tons of possibilities. And you can do using, uh, touching the, sh the shoulder of the follower, you can do by the elbow, by the hands, by the neck, by the sides of the back, by the traps. So you have a lot of different points of contact. And I started to play around and have fun with all those moves. That was when I started to see some other moves like toalha and also chicote side to side. Toalha is this movement here. Some people also call this movement as tornado or desengrenado. And also there, there is a other movement called toalha that is like you flip the hand up and then you go down very fast. But I call all of this as toalha and you will understand why. And this is chicote side to side. Usually this movement is done by going to one side, hitting and coming back, but it doesn't have to be. And those movements started to be very popular here in Sao Paulo. And I was like, okay, I will learn those moves. I want to learn those moves. And they didn't fit inside those three boxes that I used to have in my head of balão, roasted chicken and tilted turns. So I started to think, okay, maybe I need a new way to look at head movements to put all of those things together. And in that time, there was also a lot of discussion about what is active head in head movements and passive head in head movements, right? Some people were saying one thing and some people were saying other things, or I was at least trying to get to the source of this, what means this idea of active and passive head movement. And especially with toalha, some people were saying that toalha is active head movement and some people were saying that it's passive. So I was like, okay, what is the definition? And then I asked Delano and basically he said like, if the movement is happening uh, as a consequence of the, the leader energy, the head is going passive, right? But if the head is creating the motion, the muscles of the neck are primarily being activated to generate the motion is an active head. And actually you can do toalha with both techniques, right? If you can lead the toalha... Here the movement happens from the torso and the head goes as a consequence of it. But the follower can also do it by herself, by activating the muscles of her, her neck and throwing the head even faster than the turn, like this. Here Isa is using the muscles of her neck to throw her head even faster than the turn. And they already turn so fast. So that was me. I was seeing all those different head movements and trying to get a pattern to organize all of it. That was when I had an insight. So I used to be a skateboarder, right? And when you do skateboard, there is a lot of tricks that you want to learn to have fun. And I have a shape here, so I will show you some ideas. Hmm. You're not expecting that, right? So in the skateboard, you have the flips. That is when you, you flip your board like this in this axis, right? So like this, and then you land. And you also have the shove it. So it's when you twist in this axis here, right? It's called sometimes as vario or sometimes as pop shove it. So you learn both of those tricks, and then the next one that you wanna wanna learn is shove it plus the flip. So it would be something like this. You see, it gets very confusing. And then you wanna learn 360 flip, and then shove it double flip, and then you do the, the shove it to one side and you do the flip to the other side, so you have a new trick, and then you do 360 shove it. And you get all the variations because there's a game called Game of Ski. And what happens is your friends, they if they land a trick, you have to do the same trick as they did. If you didn't do, you get a letter. When you complete Ski, you lose, right? And you don't want to lose. You have to agree. Isn't that beautiful, the Ski turning around? So let's analyze what two different movements are happening there. As you can see, the skate is turning horizontally as a pop shove it and also uh, in the easier axis to turn, that is the flip. And both, both things are happening at the same time. So you have two pop shovets and two flips. This trick is called 720 double flip. So 
So what is the point of this? With those two different flips, and also in this axis here, and in this axis, you start to mix them in different directions, in different ratios, and you have lots of different tricks, right? And then you get all of them, and then you can land one and then land the other. Nice. You also can think about the analogy of back flips and front flips and twists, right? So you combine those and you have a lot of different tricks. How would be those in hand movements? So the first variable would be circumduction of the spine. So remember, it's that movement of the spine that I told you. So this movement by itself is the balloon, right? The second fundament would be body rotation. So it's the rotation of the body when you twist to one side or turn to the other side, right? And if your spine is already in a passive position and you just do the body rotation, you have the tilted turns. So circumduction of the spine by itself becomes balloon, body rotation by itself becomes tilted turns. Now, what happens if I get one circumduction of the spine and one body rotation to opposite directions and I execute them at, the, them at the same time. I put them together at the same time. What happens is you have the roasted chicken, right? So the roasted chicken is already a combination of two different fundamentals. Balloon by itself, circumduction of the spine, and two to turns, body rotation. And when you mix circumduction of the spine and body rotation at the same ratio, at the same speed, to opposite directions, you have the roasted chicken. Cool, and having this view, what we start to do was like, okay, if there's those two fundamentals and we have those three different components, if we also put them in the same ratio but to the same direction, we have toalha. So toalha is circumduction of the spine and body rotation at the same ratio to the same direction. And what would be chicote lateral? In chicote lateral, the body does one full rotation and the head does just half, so 180 of circumduction. So that's the chicote side to side. Twice more body rotation than circumduction of the spine, but both to the same direction. That was when I started to think, okay, so now what about playing with the ratios, right? What happens if I get opposite directions of circumduction of the spine and body rotation, but with different ratios? Maybe twice more circumduction of the spine, or maybe twice more uh, body rotation, or maybe four to three here. What kind of movements will come out from it? So I got a teddy bear, and I started to try to understand the motions and map on a notebook. And then I started to execute the movement by myself, and also uh, showed Lari, and she got the moves. And stay in this phase where we could execute the movement but I couldn't find a way to lead it. And that's how we came up with those different movements like the planet and also the horse saddle. The planet is this one with this ratio. Okay, here Light is doing twice more body rotation than circumduction of her spine and two opposite directions, that's planet. The horse saddle looks like this. Here's the opposite, it's twice more circumduction of the spine, opposite directions, horse saddle. And to be able to lead all those different variations, we had to come up with a frame theory that would allow us to navigate through all those possibilities. And I also can do a video about this, the things, the way that we organize our frame to be able to jump from all those crazy head movements, right? Cool, and having this view, that's the way that I organize the head movements now. So I like to think about the pure movements would be just balloon and just tilted turns. And then something that I call even compound head movements that would be mixing those two fundamentals, your conduction of the spine and body rotation to different directions and same direction, but keeping the same ratio. So to different directions, you have roasted chicken and to the same direction, you have toalha. And then we also have the uneven compound head movements. It's when you mix circumduction of the spine and body rotation at different ratios and also different directions. So chaos is on. The horse saddle is called as horse saddle because when you drown the leading to this using that frame theory that I was talking about, it drowns 
the saddle of a horse on the air. Do you know when you throw a rolling ball and the ball rolls to one direction but moves to the other? That's what the head of the follower is doing in this movement. And that's a sensation that is very hard to unlock. Usually the followers try to, to go to what they are used to, that is roasted chicken, so rolling the head at the same place. But it's leadable. I already lead it in some followers uh, at first, like Ana Rosa and Jessica Landon. I tried with them like first try and they did it perfectly. And I'm also training my leading to this move, so it's not like perfect yet. I cannot lead everybody to it yet, with, at least without uh, building up to the movement. Now you just have to understand how much of body rotation and how much of circumduction of the spine you are leading to your follower. And how do you lead all those two things and how do you know that that's the leading to execute those movements as a follower. When you want to lead body rotation, you want to give a horizontal force around the vertical axis of the person that you are leading. So it's like this, right? So it's horizontal and going around the axis. And to lead the circumduction of the spine, what you want to do is you want to change the direction of the tilt of the spine of this person. So it's more like if when you get a pan and then you put some butter and you do like this for the butter to go around, you change the angles and that's the motion that you have to think about. Doesn't matter how you are touching the follower, that's the idea, right? And then you can mix both things like horizontal rotation around the axis with this and then you have like all the possibilities. And follower, if you get all the system, you will be able to understand what you did because what happens a lot is some followers they follow and then you go like, how was it? And she was like, wow, this was amazing but I have no idea of what I did, right? With this, you kind of can organize your thoughts and have a map to understand what kind of movements your leader was leading you. Cool, something cool about head movements too. A long time ago, me and Ladi, Mark and Melissa, we were training together, having a training session and then Mark showed me a way to get out of roasted chicken doing like a exit that you, we usually do to two to turns. It was like, wow, that's super cool. But I already seen head movements like this. I saw like, okay, there was a roasted chicken that goes straight to two to turn. So that thing of using ballon as a hub to connect roasted chicken and two to turn, it was a straight, straight connection here from those two, and I was like, wow, that's super cool. And then I tried, instead of already exit, the roasted chickens, two, two, two turns, and I started to understand how this works. And what I did next was, okay, how can I come back straight from two, two turns to roasted chicken? And then me and Lari, we came up with a way using the same frame theory to communicate this way back. And then we started to play with this transition too. So it looks like this. <laughs> And in, in skate, there's a flip called impossible flip. It's called it like this because for a long time they thought it was impossible. And then Rodney Mullen, he started to do this flip. So basically what happens is that you will rotate the skate in this axis. And because, <laughs> because it's very unstable to do like this and you will be above here. So they thought there was no space for it. They thought it was impossible, but then someone did it, right? And uh, for a long time I thought, what would be the correspondence of the impossible flip in Zook? And then, would, would be the movement happening in this vertical axis, here or here, right? So I thought, or it would be a card reel, or it would be a back flip or a front flip. And that's, that, that's not easy to lead in a social, so <laughs> I will not start playing with it. Then, in another training session with Saulo, I don't know what happened but we started to explore like rolling with our backs in the wall and the rolling motion is like this and if you look at the head the head is going in the same motion that it goes in a car wheel so i started to think oh i can use this as the impossible flip of head movements so I started to try to think about a way to lead in it and I came up with this, this grip.
And if you think about, we are using the flexion of the middle back that we already used to head movements, plus the, also the movement of the lower back to go to this lower position. But we already use this position a lot when we do dive ins, that I call in Portuguese mergulho or references. Check it out, it's the same position. I do to introduce the followers when they are not used with this movement because I like to do this a lot. I like to try out those ideas in socials with followers that never did this before. So what I do is first I lead a diving and then when they are in that position, I tilt their bodies and do just the exit of what would be the impossible head movement, right? And they start to get more used with that. And then what I do is I do a balloon forward, I create a wall and then I get different grips to lead a clear path vertically. And it's happening. The followers go like, what just happened? Cool, so keep doing lots of head movements, move your spine right, that's good for you. And there's a reason why a lot of people go and choose to do this all night long, because they feel really good after it, right? And also during it. Uh, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on our social media. We started to post a lot of good content and things that we would like to see in the internet about Zook, about our beloved Brazilian Zook. I'm Luis Alton and see ya!